Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I once again, uh, Rollins Ogier by name, the founder, by his grace, of this movement, the Lost Voice Empowerment Initiative. The reason why we are gathering here today. Um, I want to appreciate the whole of you for making our time uh, to grace this occasion because uh, we believe that uh, the only way to get a message across or across to the whole world is by uh, working with the youth. That is we, the youth of this nation. By bringing the message to your doorstep, to your hearing, and that you may help to move this message forward. This is the reason why uh, we commenced this journey about two weeks ago, and this is not just holding conference like we are doing right now. As you have observed, there are so many videos already online in YouTube. Um, you can see even some environment where some of these speech were conducted. They weren't very conducive, very perfect. But we believe that the only way to get this message to the heart of everybody is going from door to door, from street to street, from state to state, and, and otherwise. I want to talk strongly today concerning one of the pillars here in this manifesto. I will encourage you, those of you here, and those that are watching all over the world, to get a copy of this book. This book contained every information that we need, how to make it work, the kind of nation that we want to live in, and the one that we want to leave behind for our children. Um, what the pillar I want to treat about today is about tax paying. I'll treat about tax. And also, secondly, I'll be talking about discriminations that had brought about, you know, the segmentations among every Nigerians. Like I stated in part of my videos, tribalism or nepotism, it's a virus that no one wish to have, especially a nation that wants to move forward, that want to be a great nation, like we are aspiring to have or, or be great people. We must do away with nepotism. Tribalism is not what we want. I should be able to love you with the whole of my heart just because you are a Nigerian. You are a human being like me. And you should do the same in reciprocal. At the time I begin to favor some group of persons just because they are my brother or we hail from the same state. Uh, we share the same language. There is no way I would expect growth in my society. For example, about four or five years ago, I constituted first uh, an agency you know, of soccer and stuff like this. And one of my brother, my younger brother, came and said, bro, I would like to work with you. You know, I got no job now, you see the way everything is, and now that it's owned by my brother, of course, I want to be, uh, you know, one of the big guy in one, the, one of the office and stuff like this. And I told him straight off, in present of my mama. 
I said, bro, I'm sorry. I cannot give you any job. Why there? I said, because right now, I have three seats. And the people that I am looking towards to occupy those three seats are professionals. People that are skilled for that particular assignment. And you have no idea over what I'm talking about. You don't have the information, even the base. So because of this, I cannot employ you. My mama looked at me as calm. But that's true. The reason is this, why am I saying this? I refuse to give him that offer just because he doesn't possess the qualification for that seat. And this is my own blood brother. And that is how it ought to be in every nation that wants to move forward. When there is possibility for a job, it should be given to someone that possess the information. Now, talking about tax, this will drive me to talk about our religious leaders. Whether Christians, Muslims, Hindus, or whatever. Now, in our Christendom, I'm a Christian. In our Christendom, we are taught that we should pay our tithes in the in our churches this is because it is biblically backed up and we should pay our tithe in order to promote the message of God and to promote the kingdom but what they didn't tell us or teach us is that the same way tithe is required to promote the kingdom of God and make our churches, our mosque, look beautiful and perfect is the same way our tithe will promote the welfare of our nation. They didn't teach us that. There's nothing wrong in you paying tithes. Um, that's not my argument today. But there's something wrong when you know how to pay tight and you don't know how to pay tax. Because the same Bible says that he that know what is right and do it not unto him or her is a sin. So if you know how to do one and you don't know how to do the other, you are a sinner. So, I am sending this message to our religious leaders, pastors, imams, and what have you, that we should bring to the knowledge of our members in our congregations that tithe is the same as tax. Tithe is paid to God. Tax should be paid to the states. There is no way we can expect to have a beautiful environment, good roads, portable water, good school, medical facilities, all of these beautiful things that we will wish to have as a Nigerian if we are not showing or taking responsibility. There are so many things that ought to be taken into cognizance and had been abolished. They've been downplayed. That is why the roads to our churches are bad and inside our churches are beautiful. That is why we can build 30 million and 50 million houses and even far more than that 
There are some parts in this country where you purchase a plot of land for over 700 million. And now tell me what you're going to spend to build it. But the road that leads to where that building is, is a mess. Even the gutters, they are without, you know, they, they have no proper uh, finishing. And, and all these things are contributing to the debilitating states of every Nigerian. The sickness, the cholera, diseases, malaria. So in other words, what we are doing is that we are on earth and we are building heaven. Because we are following one side of the scripture that says that we should bank to where we are going. We are on earth and we are banking in heaven, forgetting to build where we are. First, you have to make earth before you make heaven. Let's don't forget the word that says that neatness or cleanliness is next to word godliness. You can't live in a dirty environment. And expect to make the kingdom of God. You must first clean the inside of you. Listen, the inside of you, and later clean the outside of you in order to receive the godly message. So, the inside of you is what we are here to really talk about. The outside of you is also important in this movement which is our environment, how to keep it tidy in the perfect states. But also, let's talk about our mindset, which is the inside of us. Because I am tired of seeing Nigerians abroad looking beautiful, handsome, and, and looking kink and khaki. Best cars and best hotels and, and the best dress and everything. Some of them, they come to boutique in Europe and they close the boutique down. Why in your country where you hail from or where you're coming from, the poor are the very many. Why the rich are the very few. I said in one of my meetings, a family where there is only one rich man or woman, the family is still subject to ab abject poverty. Until that wealth is shared round, and there is majority that are doing great, the family is still indebted to suffering. So we should see how we change the mindset of our people to doing what is right at all times. And not charging people to focus on the wrong direction. There had been 101 NGOs before the Lost Voice Empowerment Initiative emerged. And I, from this, at this very moment, I want to thank all the NGOs that have been fighting for youth empowerment, for equal rights, for the way forward in Nigeria, on how we can live in a better society, society that is more prosperous, more secure, and more prepared to face our new challenges of the new era. I want to thank them for their effort. But one thing that they are doing that makes us different is that all the message are still referred to classifying some group of persons as the evil ones and other group of persons as the good guys. All around. Who are the bad ones and who are the good ones in Nigeria today? The bad ones are your leaders, which you yourself voted to the office 
that they occupy. You weren't drunk when you voted them. You could have taken your time to run through their history. You didn't do that. You voted them because of 5,000 naira that is given to you at the polling booth. And some Ghana must go loaded with some millions of naira, which is bread for today, hunger for tomorrow. You sold your right for 10,000 naira for a bag of rice and a bag of salt that can only last your children for one month. And who is giving it to you who occupied the seat for four years? You were blind? And after they have gotten there, fighting to recover that money which was spent on you, you're coming up to blame them. What was the negotiation before giving them your vote? Now, who are the good ones? The good ones are the youths of Nigeria. Or all the people that are not the leaders. So this is like divided into two. It's split in two sections. The leaders and the people. But what we are telling ours is that no one here is a saint. No one. The leaders are not perfect. You and I, the people, we are not perfect. I know you don't like me when I have to tell you like this. Because you are looking for that guy that will tell you, Nigerians, you are the best, the youth. Yes, the leaders are bad. Let's go and kill them. Hey, let's go and cook them. Oh, that's what you want to hear. But that is not the way. It's only a way of pushing you to the verge of war. It's only a way of making things worse for you and I. And who are those to benefit from those problems the day of tomorrow? You and I. Again. Because the leaders are no longer there. They are close to where they are going than where they are coming from. But you and I, we are still close to where we are coming from compared to where we are going. You don't push me to fight when I cannot count on you when the real hour comes. I shouldn't be a ludo. That you can push to anything and later I'm looking stupid. I should have my own brain to think what is really here that nobody wants to talk about. Why are we all floating to one side? Always one side. I discover one thing. I have a life story in 2005 I was playing soccer in Spain and I went to Sevilla Football Club for screening and um, during that a month screening or so or uh, you know as a player or you know um, candidate or whatever you know, you have this pass to go and watch football. So I had some big friends there then, like Marco Kula and the whole of them who would give you pass for free and all that. So we went to watch this match. It was a derby between Sevilla Football Club and Betis. While the match was on, there was a foul play in favor of Sevilla Football Club. And a red card was issued by the referee directly. Now, watch. The guy sitting beside me wasn't watching the, the game going on. 
because he was with his girlfriend and they were busy kissing and kissing all through he wasn't watching the football going on on the field so that's to tell you that he was completely ignorant of what happened that sport but because he heard people you know uh, with that kind of some everybody will groan hey you understand and that was the same way he you know left his girlfriend and followed the crowd hey you understand and i looked at him like this and he looked at me uh he said what happened i said you should have asked before hey that means he screamed that her without knowing the reason for for it that is exactly the perfect example for so many nigerians so many of us so many of us are chanting leaders are bad leaders are bad leaders are bad call the guy and say tell me why you think leaders are bad there is no information it's only going to tell you no light bad road no good school no good job no this no that yes these things are true i'm not disputing that i'm not disputing that but leaders are bad that we know how to chant this uh, information that we've been in cocaine with right from our childhood from our parents in most cases Imagine a child that is growing up today and hadn't heard anything better more than ah our leaders don't kill this country this country don't die this one don't happen what do you expect this child to grow up with because little children they are like foam the mattress foam any water that got in it get what as up and doesn't drop away so whatever they hear you saying whatever they see you doing is what they do so they grow up with the mentality that leaders are bad not that they know why you said so and this is how the whole of us had you know so crime this anthem and it's going on and going to viral but like I said, I'm not holding brief for anybody. For leaders or for you or for whoever. No. I'm bringing you the fruit. And to drive you in the direct path. That every man and every woman that want to live in a perfect society. And have a dream that he or she is willing to bring to pass. And has plan for its actualization. What he or she should do is to work for it. To work for it. And working for it means work hard. It means taking responsibility. We have to take responsibility to create the kind of atmosphere, the kind of society that we want to live in. What, how do we want this Nigeria to be or to become in the next 10 years, in the next 15 years, in the next 20 or 30 years? We should come to the table and start to negotiate that now. And another message I want to send is that I am calling on every Nigerian youth, every Nigerian youth, I am not calling on the elders because they are dried already in the system. The problem that the youths are facing today are not caused by the youth, are caused by our parents and our foreparents. But we have inherited this and we are passing it to our children and our children will pass it to another generations. And we must cut that trend now. To cause that trend requires consciousness. It requires consciousness. It requires one that is determined, that is prepared, upstairs. 
And we have to do it. Because it is falling onto us to fix up what is broken. Or one day, we will allow this country to fall into a valley of disrepair. This I have said time without number. It is not my wish to see things become this way. I want a great nation for you, for me, for our children. I want our brothers in the offshores to start seeing us as great people. At people who have changed their mindsets. A man once said that, do you want to try the ability of a black man? Two white men, they were arguing something and they said, uh, what do you mean? And said, you know what? Just bring out money and stretch it to a black man and ask him to do anything. He or she is ready to do it. And said, bring out banana and stretch it to a monkey and ask the monkey to do anything. The monkey is ready to do it. I said, that is because if you want to hide treasure from the black, hide it in the book because they don't like reading. That's hurtful. That's so wretched. That's completely repugnant to be described with a man. But is it the fault of the man that said so? That's the question. It is not the fault of the man that said so, but the fault of he or she that possess these words, characters. Black money making and make it fast. We have to move away from this money, 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 and now, 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 to the atmosphere of strategizing the future of 10, of 15, of 20 years to come. That money, your father, my grandfather had pursued it and couldn't get it, and he's no longer here. My father did, and he's no longer here. Is it the same thing that we should possess? Or we should look for a different mindset? To bring a new thought on a new way of life. Let's begin to strategize. Let's forget money first. Let's think about name. And because we are so money conscious, that is why we have so dent the image of our dear country. That what you call corruption. And Rollins Ogid. Do not call it corruption. I don't call it corruption. You know what I call it? You want to hear that? Lack of integrity. Majority of Nigerians lack integrity. It's not corruption. Because if you know what is integrity, there are so many things that you wouldn't do. For the sake of good name. My father once said, that good name is better than word, bad riches. If you don't want a man to call you bad names and describe you as anything worse, don't do things that are bad. Keep a good name. My father-in-law, Mr. Austin Aragon, is right here, said... That if you don't want fly, don't sell meat. You know what that means? If you don't want flies, don't sell meat. If you don't want to be called shit hole, don't do things that will make one to call you one. If you don't want to be described as a non gratis, don't do things. That looks so. 
If you don't want to be described as a gullible folk, stop being prankful. It's simple. I choose the name I want to bear. You choose the name you want to. I choose the life I want to live. You choose the one you want to. But we have got no choice than to follow the right path. Which is doing what is right at what? All time. Not in some time, but at what? All time. When you buy a sachet of water and you are able to consume the continent, which is the water inside, don't throw the sachet on the public road. Don't do that. Have some remorse. Be human a little bit. When you are able to purchase a can water or bottle water or soft drink or whatever and you consume it, don't throw the can or whatever on the public road or anywhere just like that. Don't do that. Whether you are in the public bus or you are in a private car, don't do that. Drop it inside your car. So you think inside your car is so beautiful to take drust, but the government road or the public road is the best place to drop your nonsense. That means you know what is good, but you don't want to do it. If not, you would have dropped it on your bed, for example. At least you have dustbin in your home. Drop it in your car when you get home. Bring it up. Circulate your foot mat. And drop those things in the dustbin. And be human enough to pay the, what they call the lawman bill. So they can come and pick your garbage from your doorstep. Stop being hypocrites. You consume your food and everything. And you back up the garbage. And take it to the roadside and dump it there. When it is dark. And you are expecting who you are not paying tax to. To come and pick it up. With what money? With which money? Where is the money coming from? Have you asked yourself? And now, when a Cameroonian is driving that road the next day and see those heaps of garbage and nonsense you drop there, and you know the first thing they say, ha, huh? Nigerians, very dirty people. You have given all the other Nigerian the name. Because the man driving wouldn't know the name of the very individual that think very low that drop the refuse is there he wouldn't ask that's not his concern his concern is that this thing is done where in nigeria by who by nigerians and that involved my family your family the governor family the president family everybody even those that are doing it right we have got no different name because we have one identity. And that is also a message to those that call themselves separatists. We are under one roof, one umbrella. Called Nigeria. The Niger area, the river Niger area, and those that live in the river niger area are owners of the niger area that means there is no one southerner that own nigeria more than the western and no one western that own nigeria more than the eastern and no one easterner who own nigeria more than the northern 
and it's so all around we all own this country on equal right on equal base and that is why i bring to your hearing that every nigeria married same fair share equal right equal right for every man every nigerian all be given the same opportunity because there are so many people that have this quality but they are completely undermined remember abraham lincoln once said that nearly every man has the capacity to stand adversity but to test a man power give i mean to test a man ability or capacity give him power until you are given the opportunity to shine and to do what you know how to do best no one sees what is in you and that is why i'm demanding upon this sake in this movement that our lawmakers and every nigerian should come out to march for equal right among genders among genders no man is more than any woman and no woman is more than any man equal right among genders the law should provide the same right that i have as a nigerian to my wife and to my daughter and to your own daughter i don't want my three beautiful daughter to grow up in this nation where men are kings and women are slaves something need be done and need be done fast we have to acknowledge the fact as somebody once said he says sir you know this thing you are saying uh, i don't know i don't want to say no you know because women you know how they are if you give them this they take this if you give them that they take this if you give them this they take that look this are selfish talk this selfish talk these are species of non gratis yes that means you believe that you are the one that wouldn't take this and take that but the women they would take this and take that that means you still want to remain in these demic states of you believing that you are more than one woman just because you are looking at your physical muscle i told you the other day the muscle of life is no longer here it is right here women have it men have it we must stand to respect our women whether you are under babylon law or you are under jeremiah law or you are under i don't know isaac law every woman merit the same right with every man every woman some of you the other day sent me a message saying why would you be saying such in this nation are you not a nigerian and i say yes i responded so are you not aware that there are some laws that says this and all that said that you know what let me tell you something every citizens of every nation is under one law a nation where there is no law no what no life we all have one law and that law governs everybody if you are not under that law that means you are not in the same nation in the same country that's what it means you cannot have two laws under one umbler you cannot now 
if if you mr b your women cannot talk does not mean that they are happy because we have some who can tell us that they are not happy among us the law should stand to give right to everybody on equal base is one of our message let us all do it right let's know what we have to do and how do we move this nation forward this is our message and this message is to the leaders is to the people is to every nigerian every nigerian we cannot pretend over this for too long we cannot i want in 2000 and you the whole of you every nigerian right now we are all planning and and looking you know oh my god 2019 you know um, god is going to send a jagobra to come uh, and be the candidate for you know to the seat of the president and you know and some angels from heaven to rule some states um, and, and so on and forth now, i want to tell you something god is done with us god is done with us He's absolutely done with us. He gave us all that we will ever need. He gave us brain. He created us in his own image. Everything he gave us. Even when we sinned, he gave us his own begotten son. To die for our own place he gave us grace and in our land nigeria he blessed us with countless resources he has given us everything so when you begin to kill yourself on prayers and fasting without ceasing what you should be using that time for is to put what God has given you to practice. Too much prayers and fasting without taking action is wasted. It's not by prayer. It's by taking action. Nigerian had grown to this sense that you can just pray and pray and get wealthy. And God would just throw some Ghana must go full of dollars from the sky. And that is why our students, not, not all of them, some, they wish to pray and go for all night instead to read to pass their exams. That is why there are so many youth today, not all, who wish not to do anything but to go to church and pray and pray and pray and fast and think that is what is going to make he or she succeed in life. Take responsibility. The white folks, they are far from our shores and they are far from where we are today. I'm talking of states of life. They're very far. The white folks, they don't do all night and pray too much like we do. If you need any nation that pray more and fast more in Nigeria and do more all night, I mean, in the world, you come to Nigeria. We overexercise it. I'm telling you. We are the one that practice it more. I mean, that show that we are practicing it. But the truth is that that thing we are practicing is far from us because we don't know what we do. We don't know what we practice. If we know what we practice, he did not require that you should sleep there and sing and do this and do that without taking action. He said, if you know, take action. Take action. And when you begin to pray, hell, it's only God that will help us in this country. Oh, it's only God that will help us in this country. Look, that is...
a hopeless mind. When I see people talking that way, I look at them and I just smile. What a hopeless people. God is going to help you. Or you got to help yourself. Heaven help those who help themselves. God did not say, I will help you so that you can help yourself. He said, you will help yourself first, then I will help you. It's a food for a lazy man. We've got to put everything to word. Let's change our mindset. The way we reason. Let's meet with our leaders. We're sending a message to them. We want them to sit down on a dialogue table. Whether you are a candidate to become a possible successor or whatever, or incumbent, we want them to sit down and say, let's talk, my people. This nation belongs to the whole of us. And we can make it a better place. What do you want? We will tell you. What do you want? We will tell you. What do we want you to do for us also? You will have to tell us. Then when that is met with, we negotiate. I know that we have so many things that we want our leaders to do for the betterment of this nation. But also, the people, we have so much to do for the betterment of this nation. In fact, for them to accomplish that which is expected of them, they need our cooperation. That is the message we have brought to you. Telling you with my last message that a greener pasture is not given to any man. It is in. God bless you. Thank you. So, at this time, um, we would like to open the floor for questions and answer. Mr. Gabriel Fange will take the mic. Um, if you have your question, please just uh, put your hand up and Mr. Gabriel will bring the mic to you. And I assure you that your answer will be provided. Thank you. I just want to ask, is there provision for tax paying in the country? Yeah, who do you pay tax to? Is there any provision for it? How do you pay tax? Since we're not really used to it, so how do we start paying tax to who and any provision? Uh, where do we go? Who do we pay to? Maybe, maybe your first question should be, um, what are the provisions? Okay. Uh, if, if we pay our tax. Now, I, I want to start by saying that um, tax paying hadn't been a practice of Nigerians. We haven't really been practicing tax paying. We, we haven't. Even some states like Lagos State, uh, where people were committed to paying tax, not really all, maybe 20%, um, we really don't understand the demograph of, of tax or, uh, uh, yet. We haven't. Even the leaders themselves, it's not yet implemented. So tax paying is a big thing. It's a big thing. So it's not just about you working and go and pay your tax and good road and water. It doesn't end. Uh, it doesn't just end there. It doesn't just end there. There should also be provisions, provisions, which is stimulative provisions that will motivate the taxpayers. And that is, when that is really in place, you and I will be willing to pay our tax. Highly willing. All right? For example, when we refer to, or uh, let me give an example, unemployment fee. Unemployment fee. All right? 
we can have unemployment fee agenda in Nigeria if we wish and if we'll understand what tax stands for. When you pay your tax, for example, you should have unemployment backup, unemployment fee backup, in case when you lose your job, if you ever find one, all right? It means when you are sick, you will be given a free medical assistant and your family, all right? It means uh, your school will be well equipped by the government. It means you will have a portable water, very clean. It means you will have a clean environment, all right? It means that so many things will function perfectly in your country. That's what it means. So, when we talk about tax, it doesn't mean that at the end of the month, they should come and ask you, oh yeah, bring your tax. And you bring your tax. And they'll go to meet Mr. Paul. Paul, oh yeah, your tax, or we beat you now. That's, yeah, that's constituting nuisance. That's not what we're talking about. There should be 16, a well-class design system that you are earning your salary and you don't know that you are paying your tax. And who's paying your tax as a working-class family? Your company, not you. But because these things are not well implemented, it's just like living in, in a fallow land, in farmland. That is why the CEOs, they are growing big, and the working class families are growing thin. Because those that are eating the money are the CEOs. Nothing is remitted to the government. And even if there is a remission, it's not used appropriately. So there is a real big work here. There will be creation of unemployment office or employment offices. Where you go the moment you lose your job to complain and put your information down that this man loses his job so so there and so so there. And that those schemes, those agencies will be the one to call you and say go to so so place you have an interview. And every Nigerian will be put to work. And everything will be functioning properly. And when you lose your job after one year, you have no job, you will still be earning 80% of what you were earning while you were working. Until you find job again. And this will eradicate crime in our society. Because so many of us today, the moment we lose our job, we are back to square one. No backup. Because the little we are in is not even enough to save from. So how do you make it work? When you have three children who are asking for food. You cannot tell your little kid you don't have work. You must fix a hot place. You cannot tell your Tommy you don't have work. You must eat something. And this is why so many... Families had gone astray and involved, been involved in so many kind of crimes and, and just to see that they fix a hot plate for their, their kids or their children or their selves. These things can be done away with if the leaders and the people can understand what I'm talking about. If the need be, I've said it two times, I have a big write-up on how this will work. This is not just about go and pay your tax. No, it's more than that. I will pay my tax when I know what I am benefiting by doing so. And when we are talking about tight implementation, it should be implemented on every Nigerian and everyone that lives in Nigeria. Everyone, sir. Even the one with a small shop on the roadside. If you make money 
from Nigeria, give back from it to Nigeria. That is the same thing we practice in the church. That's the same thing, isn't it? From your 200 naira, you are giving 20 naira to the church and to the mosque. So why not do the same to your country? How's it big deal in doing that? But it, let it be implemented well. Because those that pay tithes in the church, they also know the benefit they get spiritually. That is why they are doing it. So we should also see it the other way. So that's uh, the answer. Thank you. I guess you're... As for the, like, the tithes, is tenth, right? Then how much do you pay when paying tax? How much? Since like, it's the, for the tithes, uh, tithe, it's tenth of what you want. Yeah. So if it's tax, uh, how much do you pay? And uh, how do we, how do we, the lost boys, get this implemented? For the first one, uh, the last one is how do we, the lost voice, implement this? We have no power to do such because we are not lawmakers, we are not the leaders, we are only promoting a message. That's all. We are sending a message, we are sending a message to the top. We are sending a message to the low, to the down. So we have no capacity to implement such. We are only looking for a better environment for our family and generations to come. We know that if every Nigerian is committed to tax paying and doing what is right at all times, we will have a great nation, a great nation that the whole world will envy. That is what we know, and that's what we're sending. And in case those up there do not know the best way to implement this and all the provisions, the, 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 the range, the coverage, we can support if we are called. Now, coming into what the percentage tax should be and what the percentage the offering uh, is or something like this, uh, let me tell you, uh, offering, I mean tithes in the scripture is the same thing as tax in the social life. So it doesn't mean that they should make it 10% tax as a levy for everybody. That's not what it means. It means that we should pay tithe, a tax to the state, to the government to run the, uh, 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 our life uh, perfectly. You understand? Now the percentage that will be reached with that is between those that are voted for that uh, uh, to handle such such talk uh, i don't want to drive into um, what is not uh, mine what is mine is let us come together to do what is right that's all thank you